So, um, who here knows the name of this idea, this concept? Who knows what this is? Because Unit 13 in the Arithmetic Reasoning course, Unit 13 is where you will find your advanced word problems. Let me write that down for you. This is where you'll find your advanced word problems. And this specific type of problem is in this unit. Who guessed it? Who guessed it? Ricardo, thank you. That is combined work. Absolutely. So write this down for yourself. So here's the thing. You know, it's very possible that you might run into a problem like this on the ASVAB. This, I would say maybe one in every three tests that I've heard people talk about includes a problem very similar to this. Now, I'm not saying that you have the same numbers, same situation. Get that out of your head you're not gonna get the same questions of the ASVAB that you're gonna see here. You will, however, potentially see the same topics. And so everything in the AR course that I line up for you, those are all of the potential topics that you could see. And so making it this far in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's safe to assume that you like the way I teach. And that's the truth for a lot of folks here. So if you wanna learn more about my program, where you can get all of my practice questions, including 15,000 that'll help you succeed with step-by-step -step solutions, a lot of them having video solutions, then go ahead and reach out to me. My phone number is 567-698-8867. Go ahead and reach out to me. That way you're not stuck in the same loop that so many people are stuck in with retaking the ASVAB over and over again when the solution to getting a higher score is right here in front of your face. Again, go ahead and text me, ask me about my full program, or click the link in the description to learn more about it. But at the end of the day, sign up, get the score you want, and that job you deserve. So, advanced word problems, but this is called a combined work word problem. And I'm going to point out how you know this is it. Combined work. Okay? This is a combined work word problem. Now, if you don't know what a combined work word problem is, it's this. Basically, the giveaway is when you're talking about, hey, if it takes this person this long to work by themselves, this person that long to work by themselves for the same exact thing, how long will it take them working together? Or if they tell you how long it'll take you for them working together, and then one of the people by themselves, find the other person by themselves. Long story short, when you have these three pieces of information in play, when you have two individuals, who they're mentioning doing a certain task by themselves. And then they also mention the time it takes for them to do it together. Whenever you have those pieces of information, two individuals and then them working together, the time specifically that they're mentioning, that is a combined work word problem. And here's the setup for it. Here's the equation of the formula that you may not have seen before ever, but this is me going over it with you. The formula is this, one over A, excuse me, plus one over B equals one over T. So basically, A means person one, B is person two, and again, these are all times, and then T is the time it takes them together. Now, does this make sense to anybody here at all? Be honest, be honest. Does it make sense to you? Does this make super duper sense? I'm expecting a bunch of no's. <laughs> so it may look simple, but I want you, I really do want you to be able to explain this to yourself, okay? Everybody, here's why this looks crazy. Here's why this looks like we flipped fractions over and over again. Instead of saying A plus B equals total, let me show you why that actually wouldn't make sense at all. Think about it like this, everybody. Let's go ahead and I'm going to use someone as an example. Uh, Dedrick, since you were the last person to type in the chat box, me and you, that's who it'll be. So me and Dedrick are talking, right? So let's say Dedrick and I are running a lawn mowing business. And Dedrick says, hey, man, that lawn right there, me by myself, that'll take me, that'll take me 30 minutes. To mow that lawn, me by myself, it'll take me 30 minutes. I say, okay, cool. Hey, man, look, me me by myself, that'll probably take me 20 minutes. I, you know, I'm the owner of the company. I've been doing this for three times as long as you. Maybe it'll take me a little less time. So for me, that yard by myself, it'll take me 20 minutes. For Dedrick, 
30 minutes. Everybody, quick question. If we start talking about me and Dedrick working together, if it takes him 30 minutes and me 20 minutes, how long should it be working together? Is it 50 minutes, right? Is it 50 minutes? Since he takes 30, I take 20 by myself. <laughs> so there you go. Notice that would not make any sense at all. Because if it takes me 20 minutes and it takes Dedrick 30 minutes, working together, shouldn't it take us less time, not more? Then that's the reason. That's the reason right there. That's why these are flipped. The reciprocals are taken or they are inverted. Because when you start talking about combining the amount of time it takes to do work, it is not a direct A plus B equals total. It's gonna be, hey, using this formula, what this represents is, hey, in one hour, this is how much work the first person does. In one hour, this is how much work the second person does. And then in one hour, this is how much work they do together. So we're talking about the amount of work being done. That's how this formula is set up. Not in terms of the amount of time, but how much work is done. So even if that doesn't make too much sense, all you need to know is this, my party people, when you're dealing with a combined work problem, where you're talking about individual takes this much time, this person takes this much time, how much time together working on the same thing, this is your formula. One over A plus one over B equals one over T, where T is the time that it would take them together. So again, there it is. I do have plenty of videos on this on the website as well. But let's go ahead and show you how simple it can feel after we get past the setup. Because for these problems, honestly, the nastiest part is the setup. Once you get past that, chilling. But either way, this is still a top 1% problem. So here we go, my party people. Here we go. Working together, Timothy and Betty can complete a certain task in 16 minutes. Everybody, if we're looking at our formula, what do you think, where do you think this would belong? Timothy and Betty can complete a certain task in 16 minutes if they're working together. Where would that belong? Right, that's the value for T. So let me just go ahead and show you right away. Right away. Boom, that's the amount of time it takes them working together. 16 would be it right there. The T is 16 because that's the time it takes working together. Okay, cool. Next up, it says, hey, it takes Betty 80 minutes working by herself. And then we're looking for how long it'll take Timothy to work by himself. Okay, cool. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. A could be Timothy or A could be Betty. It doesn't really matter at all. One plus two is the same as two plus one. It does not matter. That's a good advantage that we have. All we gotta do is plug in one for something. So here we go, we'll do one over A. I'll just keep that as, you know, right there, that's Timothy, and then we'll do one over B, which that'll be Betty, and it says 80 minutes by herself. So one over 80, because what that means is, hey, in you know by herself in one minute, she has done 1 80th of the work. And in one minute together, they've done 1 16th of the work. It's about fractions. Hopefully that makes a little more sense in terms of talking about it as fractions, but that's where we're headed. But with that said, everybody, is this a solvable equation in your eyes right now? Is this solvable? Kinda, yes. So think about it like this. If there's one variable inside of the equation, always solvable, always, always, always. Here's what we gotta do. First things first, we have to get the variable by itself. Everyone, we have this big old fraction here, but we also have all of this that we can get rid of. Everyone, how would we get rid of a positive one over 80? If we're adding one over 80 to that left side, how do we get rid of it? If we see that we have a plus one over 80, how do we get rid of that one over 80? Exactly, we do the opposite operation. So instead of adding one over 80, we'll subtract one over 80 on both sides. This is the solution part. This is where things might 
Again, make more sense or less depending on your level of rigor here. So minus one over 80 on both sides. I'll just put this right over here. And so that's gonna cancel out. Now, if we wanted to subtract these fractions over here, everybody, this is where knowing your fractions will really, really, really save you. My party people, what do we need if we want to subtract two fractions? What do we need? We need a common denominator. We need that, absolutely. We have to get the same denominator. So 16 and 80 obviously are not the same, but everybody, is there a number you can multiply 16 by to get to 80? Ooh, some of y'all knew that instantly, five. Hmm, sounds good. Let's try that out. If I multiply 16 by five and one by five, what I end up getting is, again, this canceled out. So we have one over A on the left side. One times five is five. 16 times five is 80 minus one over 80. Okay, cool. Now with that said, everybody was five minus one. Right, that's gonna be four. So now we have one over A equals four over 80. And just like this free YouTube video right here, my Math Party people, I have a free practice test that comes with video solutions so you can learn from every mistake and a free math class every week, once a week for two hours. Click the link over here to sign up and get started and keep raising that score. Let's get back to the action. So if anybody here, if we were able to make it to this step, you know, without passing away, right? We're looking at this. This is a proportion. If you wanted to, you could cross multiply and divide, but I can actually show you a much, much easier way to do this. We can actually go ahead and, well, the point here, everybody, isn't it to get A up top? Isn't that the point? To get A up here? To get A up top by itself, isn't that the point? It absolutely is. So everybody, here's what you can do. Remember this, whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other. So if I'm gonna go ahead and flip this fraction to go from one over A to A over one, I gotta do the same thing on the right side. I will put the four on the bottom and the 80 up top. That'll be 80 over four. Boom. And actually, isn't 80 divided by four very, very possible? What's 80 divided by four? 20. That's it. A equals 20 minutes. And there we have it. And there we have it. Boom. And yeah, we could have absolutely cross multiplied if you wanted to. You absolutely could have cross multiplied. You would have gotten A times four, so four A. One times 80 equals 80. And you would have divided both sides by four and you still would have gotten A equals 20 minutes. Still would have worked just the same either, either, either way. But this is an example of a, honestly, a peak, peak, peak word problem. Cause you gotta know like this very, very, very niche idea. But once you know it, boom, there's your answer, 20 minutes. And before you go, if you like what you saw and you wanna raise your score with thousands of practice problems just like that, so you can lower that test anxiety, raise that confidence, go to this link right here to check out the full program. There's a video that shows you exactly how it works but you're gonna get lessons, guided practice, worksheets, speed drills, and everything that you need to feel supported from day one all the way until you pass. Again, I'm Coach Anderson, and I'll see you soon.